Casio has made connected G-Shock watches for a while now, but none could really be called a smartwatch. Sure, they had Bluetooth, but they weren't really going to compete with the Apple Watch anytime soon. But this one is different. It's the G-Shock Move GBD H1000, and it's the first G-Shock that could be seriously considered a smartwatch. Smart it may be, but it's still absolutely a G-Shock first of all. I mean, just look at it. If you appreciate G-Shocks, you're going to love the H1000. So the design is, is classic G-Shock, but the rest of it really is not. It's the first to come with an optical heart rate sensor on the back, and it's the first to come with permanent smartphone connectivity. And that means you receive notifications it was this feature which really made me excited for the H1000. I wear G-Shocks because I like the style, not because I go rock climbing or need something that really requires the, the massive toughness that comes with these watches. Getting no notification increases its usefulness to me. But what are they like in real life? Of course, this doesn't have a touch screen, so you have to do everything with these really rather lovely contoured buttons on the side. And the operating system does require a little bit of patience to learn. Let's take a look and I'll show you what I mean. To see notifications, you need to cycle through a variety of different screens. And you do that with the mode button here. Now, notifications are not the priority on this watch because you have to go through seven screens before you get to the notification window. Once you're here, you use the run button and you get a list, a long list, of all of the notifications that you've received from your phone. To see one, again, you hit the mode button on the side and then you can scroll through the text using these two buttons at the side. It's pretty clear once you're looking at notifications, they're really good. You can see what's being written and you can establish whether you need to get your phone out because you can't do anything on the screen. And that's a bit of a shame. However, I really do like the fact that you get everything. I've got all of my notifications with very little setup straight onto the watch. And although it may not be the best system, it's still very good. And as you can see right there, that's how you get notifications on the screen in the first place. And again, you can't do anything with that. Even if you try and interact, it doesn't go to it. And that's a bit of a shame. However, on the surface, this being Casio's first go at notifications on a non-touchscreen watch, they're pretty solid. So that's the notifications. But at its heart, this is a fitness watch. So what about the fitness tracking and the heart rate sensor? Well, the heart rate sensor can be measured in, a different, in, in two different ways. You can have a separate screen which just takes your heart rate or it's part of the fitness tracking system. Now the fitness tracking is unusual because you don't get separate workouts, you just get one type of tracking. And it's really best to suited for, for walking, running or, or cycling, something like that. There's no option for something like um, weight training or aerobics or anything like that. Uh, but to access it, it is very easy. You just press run and that activates the GPS which connects to your phone and uses the GPS inside the watch itself and once it's acquired the signal then you'll start tracking your workout and that gives you all of the expected information so steps and calorie burn but it also goes further than that and measures your VO2 max your heart rate and then it plots it all on graphs which are available in the new app. This is the G-Shock Move app. Now it's separate to the connected G-Shock app that you'd use for other Bluetooth connected G-Shocks. And it is specific for doing a lot of fitness tracking. You get plenty of information on as a whole and also individual activity reports. The amount of information that it gives you is extensive and equally as good as I've seen on most Wear OS or other fitness watches like the Huawei Watch GT2 and watches like that. So it's really a very comprehensive look at the workouts that you do. 
you get a VO2 max setting, you get recovery times listed, you get a daily step count obviously and calorie burn. The app itself may not be very pretty. I think there's going to be a lot of improvements, certainly judging by the connected app, which looks great. We should get some good information from this soon, good changes in, de in design. But I rather like this. It gives me everything that I need. Perhaps for the hardcore fitness fan, there might not be enough. But for me personally, as somebody who just wants to know how they're doing in terms of what they're doing with fitness and exercise, it's perfect. The watch itself is 101 grams, so this is not a light watch. It's made from, as you'd expect, plastic and metal, and it has all of G-Shock's usual amount of toughness. You're not going to break this watch unless you try really, really hard. It is a big watch, even for a G-Shock. It's certainly a long size in, in terms of size, alongside the Mudmaster and a Frogman. This is not a small, shy and retiring watch. It's also really thick. Certainly, again, next to the Mudmaster, this is a thick watch. When it's on your wrist, this does not fit under shirt cuffs. It is not a watch to wear to meetings. It's not going to hide away. Now, this one is black. It also comes in a variety of different colours. The black looks great, but I think the white version stands out a lot more. The strap itself is common to G-Shocks. It's strong, but it's if you're used to, a, say, a silicon strap or a leather strap, it will feel stiff and unyielding. What I do like, though, to compensate for the size are these guards either side of the strap under the body. They really do make it a lot more comfortable and keep it held snugly on your wrist. Another thing that separates this from other smartwatches is the battery. The battery inside is solar powered and it's going to last for at least a year in time mode and that includes notifications. If you use the GPS or if you use the heart rate tracking continuously, Casio says expect about 14 hours. And while that can be charged up using the solar energy, there's also a USB charger that comes with this that tops it all up within a couple of hours if you use the sports side of it uh, for that amount of time every day. And that's a really nice addition. It means you don't have to worry too much if you're going to use it for that, that it's going to suddenly stop telling you the time. Now I've worn this on and off over the last few weeks without using the fitness tracking and it hasn't dropped one bar from the battery meter there. So there's no reason at all to think that this will suddenly run out of power using it just as a watch. So what is the H1000? Is it a smartwatch? Is it a fitness watch? Is it a G-Shock? Well, it's all three. And a lot of what we're seeing here is a real solid step forward compared to the basic Bluetooth watches Casio and G-Shock have put out before. The notifications I really like, even though that they are still quite simple. However, I find smartwatches in general are better when they're not too complicated. It would be nice if the integration was a little bit tighter and you could action notifications. And it would be nice if generally the operating system was a little bit faster. Exiting training plans takes way longer than it should, for example. But there's everything here that the casual fitness fan and the G-Shock fan will really, really love. Just as long as you don't expect it to replace, say, a Garmin or a Sunto smartwatch or your Apple Watch. Casio is only starting to explore the benefits of full connectivity on its watches, and it's making small but useful advancements in the technology and features around this with every model that it puts out. The Move H1000 is a great purchase now, and a really very encouraging step forward for the brand's growing acceptance and understanding of connected watches. The H1000 costs $400 or £380. That's slightly more than you pay for a basic Apple Watch and a lot more than you pay for Wear OS watches like the Fossil Gen 5 or a TicWatch Pro. However, you're getting a proper, solid, ultra-tough G-Shock. And if that's what you really like, you're going to love the H1000.